I started working on the trike today. So on this, I'm putting, want to get the V-belt pulley on the wheels. I want to get the wheels put together with the pulley and the brake disc on the other one. And that way I can get them mounted on here and see where that pulley on the engine needs to line up with this pulley for the engine plate. And then I can start tacking things together. And then I can figure out approximately, you know, I'll have to set the engine on this to make sure it doesn't hit this figure out how much I gotta cut and extend the the frame here so right now this is the next step is getting like I say the rear wheels set up so I measured the hole these these bolt patterns here are different from the bolt patterns on this pulley and I measured from these holes to the, you know, across here and these ones, and they're exactly an inch smaller, this bolt pattern's exactly one inch smaller than this one. So I measured between here a quarter inch to take a half inch off each side. And then, and I did that on this side and kind of marked with pencil and then lined the holes up in the center there with the holes on the wheel and I turn it over because I don't want this pulley moving up and down while I'm running the machine. So then I measured from the bearing to the edge of the pulley and hopefully the edge of the pulley opening there. And I got exactly a half inch and I measured it all the way around. And it's pretty much all a half inch all the way around. So I think I got it looking pretty good where I can uh, punch those those uh, marks in there. So I'm going to get my, I got these punches that'll sit inside that and punch it exactly center. So I think I'm going to do that right now. This is the punch shot and that's the one I'm going to use and then you can kind of get it centered right in there. You know, it fits through the, the hole and then it'll uh, stake the bolt hole dead center just put a little mark there and then i'll punch it with a center punch at this will just kind of leave a mark for you I'm not gonna put a drillable punch with this i don't want to dull it but it'll leave a nice enough mark to where i can see it with the punch and i don't know if the little punches show up in there or not but anyway there's a little prick mark on every dead center on every hole now hopefully these holes are somewhat centered you know but anyway, I'm going to take the clamp off and me double measure it, you know, measure three times, drill once. Maybe they show up now. But anyway, it's marked just below the big holes. And now I'm going to punch them and drill them. Well, I got the holes board in it and I used some uh, paint stick just to kind of shim between the tire and the wheel. And now I'm going to measure to see how long I need to make the... Uh, this like the sleeve to go in here so i'm measuring from this part here not from that part where the bolt goes in and i'm going to measure to the bottom of the sprocket and then just add a tad just to ensure that i get it long enough i can always cut it down or grind it but i want to cut them all exactly the same and it looks like, uh, let me try it right there. Yeah, about one and three quarter inches, maybe a little more. Maybe, I don't know, I'll horse around with it for a little while. I just want to. You can kind of see what I'm doing, and then I'm going to take this tubing here and make sleeves so that uh, it holds that in place. And I'll do the same for the disc brake cowl. I'm going to make the tubes 1 and 7 eighths inches, so that'll give me a little, just a tiny bit more gap there. That'll give me enough clearance between the wheel and the pulley. I just kind of set the things here so they're not all even but these are all cut exactly the same length so they should keep 
you know, unless this is bent or not true, the, the pulley shouldn't, you know, wobble. It should be fairly straight because, like I said, these are all exactly the same. I sanded them until they are perfect. Yeah, this saw just saves a lot of work. and cut one last one because of the sharp ends you know you can't get nuts to thread on so I just kind of that'll allow a nut to thread on it If you don't do that, you never get the nut started. Alright, there we go. We got those uh, cut. Let's, uh, let's throw the pulley on just for the heck of it. Now I got the, the uh, pulley mounted to the wheel and it's all nice and even all the way around. Measured it and everything and uh, you know, everything's true on the the pulley to the tire, the wheel, but uh, I think the wheel's bent. You know, I mean, it's just a cheap Harbor Freight. Oops, my finger's hitting the, hang on, my finger's hitting the uh, valve stem. I put about 20 pounds of air in it, but you can see how the tire and wheel and everything kind of wobbles, so I'll have to straighten the wheel out, figure out how to do that. You know, it's just thin tin. I think I can do something with that. That's not going to be a big deal. Well, I think it's just was the bearings wobbling around on the shaft because you can see it rolls pretty true when I roll it on the floor. So I think, you know, and it could be out of balance because there is a little bit of slop in that shaft. I'm going to have to where the bearings go, I'll run a bead and, of weld and grind it it's just so it fits the bearings a little snugger. Yeah, so it doesn't rope. So the bearings don't turn on the shaft. The, and I have a good set of bearings for it. I might take these Harbor Freight bearings out and put in some decent bearings. Although I could drill a hole in this and put a grease fitting in it. Because they are, it looks like I could grease them. But I think that's going to work out all right. One thing with this project is I get to use some of my toys. I'm going to plasma cut out this metal for a hub disc and I'm going to use the wheel. I put a little something in between there just to keep it off because I'm going to use that as a guide for the cutter. And then I can, uh, it's going to be a little bit bigger than this, but that's okay. I don't care. I think it'll look fine when I'm done. It might come up. You know, and it'll be off the tire just a smidge. So, anyway, I'm just going to fool around with it there. Oh, and I got a disc brake caliper and the rotor. Now, I probably won't use the rotor because uh, in the past I've used, I used this on the Rutman mini bike, one of these. It worked out great, but I didn't use the rotor, I, or the, yeah, the rotor that came with it. I use the uh, sprocket for the chain as the caliper. Well, obviously I'm not going to use that that as a sprocket because it's wide for the V-belt, but I can make a, you know, a disc like this out of steel and any size I want. And, uh, who knows, I might use this, but it's just going to be hard to, you know, I have to weld something to it to attach it to the rim somehow. We'll fill it full with that when we get to it. This is just rough cut out. I haven't ground it or anything. And I just set it on there and can hold it right to the studs and that's perfect. And that, then I don't have to paint the wheel. That uh, 
hides all the wheel, which I wanted, because this is going to be cream, like I say in the past videos, and it's going to stay Rio on it. So it looks like the lawnmower. I'll try and put a picture of a real lawnmower in the video here so you can get an idea of the colors and whatnot I'm going to do it with. I'll cut another one of these out and then I'll give them a quickie grind and uh, I think they'll be ready to, to weld on to this one. I'm going to get this one done before I start on that one just to make sure I like it and everything. But I am going to... I have the plasma cutter out. I might as well cut another one of these out, right? And then I'll obviously bead blast this, you know, and it'll be all I have to grind all the, grind it down, make it look nice. So, all right, let me get back to get another one cut. That's my plasma cutting table right there. What do you think of it? Just a five gallon bucket of water works perfect for little things like this. Here, I'll try and show you how I cut this out with the plasma cutter. It's pretty, pretty nice, simple and nice, this tool. Getting the clamp there, so I gotta come over here, come around. The air compressor might turn on. I've already cut one out. Easy to compress there. really quick smart. makes it a lot easier and uh, looks like it's going to fit really nice. Totally. All right, I'm going to run them through the bead blast game and take the, take the thing apart and weld. I'm just doing one right now because this wheel is going to be different because I'm putting the disc brake on it. So I have to build all that stuff up after I get this on here because then I'll have to see where I can mount this to how big of a rotor I got to make. I'm just uh, fitting this right now and what I've been doing is turning these two nuts because it was rocking a little bit and I want it off the tire just slightly. It, this plate hits this and pushes this down a little bit which is no big deal but I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I can hold it on there and I can't wobble it. I'm trying to wobble it and it's pretty good and it's got a little bit of a gap all the way around i can see the wheel under there if i really look anyway that's gonna this i'm not holding this thing exactly you know centered on here but 
I think that'll be pretty darn good. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. That'll look kind of lawnmower y I think. So I'm gonna weld these nuts to the all thread right now. All these are welded, these are all so it sits nice and flush. I spent quite a while just sitting there and making sure that that sits on there nice and flush to the tire all the way around. Same, same gap all the way around. And that's why I welded those so that dimension won't change there. But instead of the hassle of having to take the pulley off, I stretched some of the washers out. I gotta have to replace the lock washers. But I'm gonna weld these holes shut here too. But to make it easier to get to the valve stem, I drilled a couple of holes here. I'm gonna put uh, some quarter 20 all thread through to this side. You can see I chamfered that hole. I gotta do that one yet. A little gadget there to do it. I'll show you in a minute. But then I'll just have two little studs welded on that, quarter 20 studs that will go through the holes and then tighten up the nuts on that side so it'll be really easy to get the, the hub cap off to put air in the tires. You know, because these tires, I'll probably put about 10, 12 pounds in them, like I say, not, not a lot. And these cheap tires don't stay inflated, so, you know, I'll have to have access to the valve stem but anyway that's kind of what i'm going to do so i got to run to the hardware and get some all thread but I'll show you how you know, this is just a little doohickey here see how it puts a little chamfer on there might make it a little bigger there we go got a nice chamfer usually that's what you do when you want to tap holes you put a chamfer on it and then the tap starts easier, but I'm not going to tap those. I'm just going to put a nut and a washer on them. And like I say, these will be welded in so it won't look so bad. And then I'm going to, I'm going to paint this uh, back part here green. Now all the mechanicals will be green. So this pulley, and then I'll just make a sheet metal thing that goes around from that after I do up a belt tensioner and stuff. Just got back to hardware, got some quarter 20 all thread to mount this plate out, figure out how to, you know, get this, I might have to take the wheel apart and get that centered, and then I'll tack that to this, and then that way I can uh, just roughly figure out the, where, you know, figure out where it goes so this is on here nice and even, and if it's not, I, if it's just tacked, I can break them off, and once I get it right, I'll weld it up solid, but I also, picked up a 5 8 bolt and a 5 8 nylock. I'm going to cut the head off and weld the threaded part to the axle shaft. And that way I can use this like as a lug nut to just kind of run it down and I won't be tightening the bearing up too tight. These bearings are kind of cheesy. I have a feeling I'll probably have, I have a better set from like when I did mini bikes and stuff and I might put better bearings in the wheels, but I may just leave those until they fall apart. Using my welding bench, what it's meant for is welding on. I welded these up too. I'll run them around the grinder a little bit and neaten them up. And uh, we'll get these cut to length and weld it up. I'm gonna grind these out first so I can uh, put the wheel back together. I got these marked, I don't know if you can see a little punch mark there and there where I'm going to weld the the uh, all thread to but I'm going to grind these welds grind these welds put the wheel together and then figure out how long I need to make that all thread the wheel is back together those holes look a lot better welded up and I'll finish that up nice before I paint it right now it's just to get it functioning but I uh, I just was putting this on here and then I shoved the all thread through until it hit this plate. And then I put tape on it there and that'll give me enough room for a lock washer and a nut. I didn't put the lock washers back on here. I, I, it's just easier because I'm gonna be taking apart and putting them together, but I wanted these long enough to accommodate a lock washer. That's why I put them on originally. But this, you know, and then I can, when I'm all done, I can grind bolts or do whatever I want to. To make them the length I want but for now 
that's what I'm going to cut it. I'm not going to show welding this on, but you can see that little stake hole maybe. And if I line this directly up with the center of that little stake hole, it's kind of on the edge of this. You can see, I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but that's, that's pretty darn good right there. So I'm just going to tack it, and then I'm going to tack the other one. We'll see if it fits, and if it does, we'll weld it up good. That came out really good. Good fit. Nuts, things go all the way through, and that'll be an easy, just take a couple nylocks off, push this off, and you can get the air in the tires. So I'm going to weld it up solid, and that'll be one, I think, one wheel done. Then I can start putting the axle on here so I can work on the other wheel with the disc brake. Now we can cut the frame and start putting the engine on and stuff. There it is. The drive wheel's finished up. And I'll finish these welds off nice before I paint. But for now, I'm just roughing it in. But I'm, these are going to have nylocks. So you just undo those two. And you can pull the disc off. And you have access to put air in the tires. And that's going to be cream and say Rio on it. It'll kind of look lawnmower -y. Like I say, I'll put a photo of a real lawnmower so you can kind of see the look it's going to get and tomorrow I think is going to be pull the old axle out and you can see the Sears model number there and I'm going to keep that as the number for the trike so I'm going to take my number stamps and actually stamp that somewhere in the metal on it to where you know you can see it maybe in the engine plate or something like that because i want to keep the sears model number on it it's just kind of cool but anyway yeah tomorrow that will be off and we'll weld this in and then i'll figure out you know i'm not going to cut it off to length now i'm just going to tack it in and start fitting because you know as i build things may change and it's easier to cut things off than to add on the to, to metal so that's why i'm going to do what I'm going to do, but I, I want to get the axle in to get the other tire because I'm going to probably have to make a bracket for this caliper to bolt to and then make a, a rotor that will, you know, be the right size because I think this rotor is just going to be too hard to adapt on. It's kind of cool looking. I'd like to try and I'll, I'll see if I can make something to make this rotor work. I think it'd be kind of cool to have that rotor for uh, for the disc brake. But anyway, we're going to, I think I'm going to call it a video here. I don't know how long this thing's getting to just from building one wheel. That I've been fooling with this pretty much all day, but it's, like I say, it's done. And get the other one done and the axle on, and then we can start moving a little more rapid pace. I'm probably, when I weld the axle and this will weld to the axle but I'm probably going to have to you know weld some framework so this isn't flimsy but the engine has a uh, thing here that the handles used to attach to and I'm going to utilize that because I'm going to make something that goes under here where you don't see it and I'll put a rod between here and that part of the engine to kind of give the engine you know so this plate isn't all loose and floppy for the, you know and it'll look nice that way I don't have anything welded from the front of the plate up to the bar there you can kind of see the tape or the white the way it's going to be taped and painted green there over the cream all right that's it for this video I'm going to wrap this one up before it gets too long if you like the video definitely hit the like button if you like my what I do on my channel at 348 Engine there will subscribe you and thank you for watching my video.